Hello, I am Katrick and today I'm making this video for the Construct 2 Academy. This is the part 3 of our tutorial about making a dialog box system with XML. If you haven't already, please check the part 1 and part 2 which are available in the C2 Academy playlist. That is the moment where we are currently in our code. The whole line has been displayed, the cursor is being displayed as well. We are expecting the player to make an interaction. In this case, the interaction is to click on the under dialog sprite. So that is done through the input event there, left button click on under dialog. Once again, we check what dialog type we are displaying, it's normal, you can notice that there isn't an equivalent for the question. So it means that whenever there is a question, the fact of clicking on the under dialog object won't have an interaction. Because what we will want when we are displaying question is actually the event on top of it for the user to pick an answer, not just click anywhere. So when we are clicking on our under dialog, that the dialog type is normal. And there we can see again that the txt dialog has its boolean variable show text set to true. That is kind of strange. Remember, when our text is being displayed, if I click, I stop the regular displaying of text to display the whole line all at once. And to do so, that's through an interaction of my user, and that's during the moments that the text is being displayed. So when the text is being displayed and I'm clicking, I actually want to display the whole text at once and I will set the show text to false, finish to true and set the cursor visible. So that's actually pretty much the same thing as when the full length has been displayed. That's just taking into account the interaction of our user or player. And the next event is when we are still clicking on the under dialog, that still the dialog type is normal, but this time that it is finished. The else here is required because otherwise I would be clicking on the under dialog when it's displaying a text, it would execute this event and be like, oh yes, okay, so I'm displaying the whole text, setting the variable to false, this variable to true, I'm displaying the cursor, what do I do next? Oh, I check if the txt dialog is finished, if the boolean variable is set to true. Well, it is. I've just done it. So I would be executed. The fact of having the else condition right there make it so that when this event is being executed, this one won't be, because the previous event has been executed. So it will take into account, if you will, the state of the value of the boolean before the execution of the previous event, not the current state at the moment it's getting to this. The whole text has been displayed, so right now we know that the txt dialog finished boolean variable is true. We click and on our screen it's displaying our next dialog, but in our events what we are doing is first displaying, as you see, some debug information, the cur dialog, so we are still in the dialog number one, the dialog type, it's normal, and the current line, it's one on four. You can see that to do so, I've used yet again a few values that I already have, uh, which are global variables, and a new expression from the XML object, which is node counts. There, I'm counting the number of line tags that I'm having in the dialog tag of id curl dialog. Line 1, 2, 3, 4. We do have four lines. And why is it important to know this? Because that's, that's what we use in this very next event. Knowing the total number of lines we have to display in this dialog, let us to know when the current dialog tag is finished, actually, and when it is going to be time to display the next dialog tag. So, 
If the value of the curl line variable is strictly less than the number of nodes, the number of lines tag in my XML file in the current dialog tag, then I'm calling back the function display dialog that we have seen earlier. Display dialog there, which is adding one to the current line. So in our case, it will pass to number two and then display the line according to the dialog type. Once I have reached the last line of my dialog to be displayed, so I'm just using a else condition right there, which means that the previous event hasn't been executed, which means that its condition is false. So we currently have a curl line value which is equal or greater than the number of lines in our XML file. From there, we want to go to the next dialog tag and we want to also get from our XML the next dialog text from the current dialog tag. So remember, next dialog tag is here. For the dialog of ID 1, the next dialog is going to be 2. And I'm making it a float just to be sure. And also because by default, this is a string that is returned, it's just text. Whereas the parameter I'm expecting is to be a number, a numeric value when I'm going to my set next dialog function. The set next dialog we are setting the curl dialog value to the parameter we have just passed. So we have read the four lines for the dialog tag one, the value is two, so we are going to pick the dialog tag of ID two. And we are checking its dialog type. And you can see that this time, our dialog tag number two is of type question. So we'll get back to it. Just finishing up there you can see that with those two lines, we are actually having a loop that is being performed. So let's go back to set dialog, set next dialog. We have a different dialog type this time. We display dialog still in display dialog. This time we have dialog type of question. So we are displaying question. Let's see the function display question. You can see that we are logging some different informations and there are some equivalents and some things that are the very same as what we have seen previously. We are still getting the text for our question in our log. We are still getting the animation name out of um, portrait and mood attributes, although this time it's not in a line, it's in a question tag. Portrait, mood, position and ID. We set the animation, we set the text according to the text in the dialog tag of curl dialog value and into the question tag. We show the text, we set finish to false, that's pretty much the very same. Notice that the txt dialog vertical alignment is set to center when we are displaying our question. Let's go back to show text. And this time this is a question. And as I've said, I want this time to not get a timed display, but actually display the question all at once. So the txt dialog text is set to the value of txt to display, which is our question. We set the show text to be false. We set the finished to be true, but we also call another function right there, which is named display answers. It's a new function we haven't seen so far. And its goal is to simply, as I was saying, check the number of answers into our current dialog tag of type question. So we're using once again the node count and we try to see the number of answer tag we have there. Let's see. Answer tag one, answer tag two. So we have two lines, we have two answers. And this is the value that is going to be uh, returned right there. We repeat for this number of times the fact of creating the txt answer object. So remember, 
this is this one which is uh, specific which is different so we repeat the number of times we have per answers so two we have two answers possible so we repeat two times we create the txt answer object in the dialog layer and we placed it accordingly to be honest that's the place in the current example that is not completely optimized and that you can pretty much do as you want it works currently because I have two answers if I change to three or four or more answers the position and the display of the answers won't be as neat as it is that's really up to you to your project it's uh, its interface if you will so just know that into the logic when you are displaying your answers that's where it goes for each txt answer object we are setting the id answer instance variable to the current loop index plus one the loop index is the index from the current loop so the repeat condition is making a loop we loop the number nb answers time all loops and pretty much everything in a construct is zero based so right there I need to add a plus one because in my XML file I've set the IDs to be one by default they are one based not zero based that's why I'm adding there the plus one and I'm setting the text of the txt answer object according to the answer so pretty much like we did so far we pick the dialog of id attribute current dialog in the answer of id attribute loop index plus one for the reason I've just stated earlier I create the object cursor answer and display it on the left of the txt answer object and make it flash so from now on when I'm getting to a question that's here I'm expecting my user to either click on yes or no one answer or another and this is in the event 25 there mouse on left button clicked on txt answer so we have two local variables next branch dialog obviously that's going to allow us to know what is going to be the next dialog tag we want to display and which is the current picked answer according to the txt answer object that has been clicked on we just make sure that the dialog type is of question it's a bit redundant there it's not really needed but at least it's logical and we are still sure that we are being displaying a question and that's where it should work we reset our current line uh, value to zero it's about the same it's not very necessary but uh, in my um, trials and errors it seemed to be important at some point to uh, modify it from there we set the picked answer value to be the id answer instance variable value of the clicked txt answer objects and we set the next branch dialog by going into our xml file checking for the next dialog tag of id attribute picked answer and as you can see here in our dialog id2 of type question the next dialog tags do have an id attribute so when the answer id1 the next dialog to display id1 is going to be the dialog number three and for the answer number two the next dialog id2 to be displayed is the number four this is also uh, some branching and some structuring that I've decided upon and that allows you to make branching dialogues this way I wait zero second there and the wait zero seconds actually means that I'm skipping a tick 
from the moment that I've clicked on the txt answer and I'm going to call the function set next dialog using the next branch dialog according to the type of answer I've clicked upon. The weight there is because if I just click on my answer there, if I don't wait a tick, it would actually consider as well that I'm clicking underneath and it would actually, instead of displaying the first line of the next dialog, directly display the second line. Because one click is considered to be passing from a question to the next dialog di and displaying it. And so finally, the last thing we can do and we can uh, check out, uh, as I was saying uh, in the very beginning, is the dialog type when it's the end, it's simply giving back the uh, control to your player. And in our example, we are making the dialog uh, la layer invisible and displaying the button. And finally, our last event is when we click the button, we make sure that the layer dialog lay is not visible. Uh, when you right click a condition, you can invert it and we simply restart the layout. And that's about it for how this example works. Read the comments of the KPIX to read the comments in the XML file itself. Take your time. You may need to look at this video several times. It's normal. As I said at some point, there is some mental gymnastic going on, especially when you are making your own structure in XML and implementing it to read from your XML file in Construct, there are a lot of errors that can arise, stupid errors as I was saying from the fact of using the wrong XPath for the XML, using a capital letter where you shouldn't or using not a capital letter where you should, the fact of using the correct attribute, the correct value, etc. It's a bit daunting, it's a bit complicated, but to be honest, once you are done with it, it's also quite rewarding. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Don't hesitate to check out some of the other Construct2 Academy material. Thank you for watching.